Hey, welcome aboard. Thanks for stopping by again. All right, still sanding. One of the things I uh, brought up during the first uh, um, video that I made was that I'm not presenting myself as an authority by any stretch of the imagination. Never restored a boat before, so there's going to be trial and error involved. And the reason why I decided to shoot these videos, even though I'm not an expert, is because whenever I don't know how to do something, I try to overcompensate with a tremendous amount of research and as asking as many questions as possible. So, sometimes that means, well, most of the time, that means that I'm going to be very inefficient. Uh, and how I do this and that usually means that things that I've already started to do I'm probably going to have to do over again and the sanding hasn't been any different so one of the problems with the issue of painting the interior of a boat not necessarily the exterior but the interior at least what I've read is uh, there's very little consensus uh, in terms of uh, what kind of paint to use whether you should use marine grade something that's bulletproof whether you can get away with using uh, oil-based paints at Home Depot, what kind of sanding uh, grit you should start with and finish with. And it really comes down, I think, to what kind of boat you are restoring, how old it is, and what you're trying to accomplish. With this boat, this is a lot of work. I'm happy to do it for the experience, but I don't want to do it again anytime soon. So, what I'm looking for is something that I can basically set it and forget it. I can paint and it'll be bulletproof for the next several years. When I go to sell the boat, I'm not going to have to re-strip, sand, and paint again. Uh, it'll look, you know, just as good as it did when I started. Now, this is a freshwater boat. I don't have salt corrosion issues that a lot of boats have. Pretty much it's moisture, and inside a boat, the UV question is not uh, as big an issue. So, one of the problems I've been having with my sander, and I started with uh, 120 grit, again, based on what I was reading, and I think the actual original paint is, is still on, because I haven't seen anything underneath it to indicate that it was that it's been repainted. Uh, which kind of leaves me a little bit concerned about lead content, but I'm using my respirator. It's a, uh, the second highest respirator that they sell at Home Depot on the label. I remember it said it was a, a medium. So it handles vapors and, and particles from most things. Um, you know, it's probably not going to fly at uh, the Center for Disease Control, but for here, I, I think it's going to be okay. Um, but. The surfaces of the boat are uneven on the inside. They've got a lot of high and low spots. And I can show you what I do with my cheesy headlamp. There it is. What it looks like so far with the starting with 120 and then dropping down to 80 on my sander. It's still, I, you know. I'm not happy with it, and I, like I said, I don't want to do this again, and if I spend any kind of you know, money on the paint, I want it to adhere, cover, and you know, basically do this job. So, uh, I'm going to stop the tape, another video, and switch it around and show you what it looks like so far. Okay, now, if you can hear me over the halyards banging, normally I love that sound, but when you're trying to shoot a YouTube video, it doesn't really help. Now, look at this surface here. See, you've got some shine still on, and, and that's not just from the light. And you'll see light patches, inner, you know, and in between them, like right here, uh, dark patch, dark patch, light patch, light patch. Those are the highs and the lows. Uh, eventually, every now and then you'll see, you know, that, which is getting down to the fiberglass. Now, I don't want to sand into that, but I want my paint to adhere. So, 
I talked with my stepdad, Jeffrey, sailor, sailor extraordinaire, Kiwi. Also, uh, owner of a 31 foot island packet. And what he said was that the gloss is supposed to be dulled, kind of cloudy. And I don't think I'm quite there yet. So, I found a really good article that I will post, uh, or at least post a link if I can get permission to uh, just, just flat out post it. Um, talking about the value of a grinder. Now I'm going to have to uh, buy a grinder anyway because uh, my fall project is to... I can turn this off now I guess. Is it beeping? No, no. Thanks. All right. Uh, my fall project is to paint the hull. The hull of this boat is uh, painted red and I want it to be navy blue and uh, very much white on top. So I'm going to need a grinder when that job comes around. Um, so I went ahead and, and, uh, and bought one. Um, turns out, you know, grinders come in all shapes and sizes like many tools and in different amper uh, amp amperages, if I pronounce that correctly. So I bought an amperage that is in the middle of the road, um, an 8 amp four and a half inch DeWalt grinder, not getting paid by DeWalt. Um, and uh, 25 grit and 50 grit sanding discs. I'm gonna start with the 50. And according to, uh, again, the research that I've done and the people I spoke with at Home Depot, uh, it should be fine for sanding. Also, uh, this winter, one of the winter projects is gonna be uh, gutting the inside of this. And this particular, ice box right here. Well, it's not even an ice box. It's just dead space. I've, I've talked to some other, uh, or seen other tartan owners that have taken it out, and, and angle grinders what they used. So if you're going to be making any kind of interior changes in terms of uh, the configuration of your sailboat interior, uh, an angle grinder apparently cuts through fiberglass like butter. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, but for now, I'm going to get uh, back on the sanding and uh, I'll let you know the results of the use of the angle grinder. Oh, and before I do that, I got pretty beat up yesterday. When you're doing this, you're, you're crawling around inside tight spaces. I showed you the anchor locker. I had to get in there. Uh, I'm 6'2", well over 200 pounds, and I've got bumps and bruises, and I'm sore. So I invested in uh, some cheap knee pads, and uh, I lifted my 15-year-old's uh, hockey elbow pads uh, over massive protest, but uh, I told them to suck it up. Um, they'll come back as good as new. All right, so I'm going to let you go for now, and I'll show you the results. Okay. Yeah, the grinder uh, really changed the game. So let me show you uh, just how much, okay? 